One of the things I've had to face with in the media ministry is computers that are slow. Now, if you have the money to use a Mac, you're going to run a lot smoother. Uh, Macs run great, but they still have their issues. They're still not as fast as they could be. Uh, PCs tend to have more issues with speed. I'll throw a PowerPoint up and it'll lag a little bit. So I, I just want to give you a quick tip on how to speed up your PC or Mac, particularly your PC. You'll see a huge, huge performance. Uh, by using an SSD and what that stands for is solid state drive and let me just show you a picture of that a normal hard drive here's an example looks like that that's a laptop hard drive It's two and a half inches wide and uh, this is a solid state both of them hook up with SATA and uh, a normal power there SATA power and you can kinda look at the top there there's a couple of pictures. This is a solid state hard drive. Now, if you're familiar with your camera sticking in a little card in your camera, you'll know what a solid state is, except solid states are a lot faster. A lot faster. Whenever I hit a program with a solid state installed, it comes up almost instantly. Now, if you hit your PowerPoint and you're waiting 10 seconds for it to come up, your computer's probably ready for an SSD. Um, it's been the best investment. I don't care about RAM. I only run two gigs of RAM in my media machine for the church. It runs great. Um, but if you'll get an SSD, that'll be the biggest performance increase you can do for any computer. Uh, laptop, desktop, uh, if you have a laptop you're using portable, get an SSD. The other cool thing about SSDs besides the fact that they're uh, amazingly fast is uh, you can have it running and throw it across the room. Now I wouldn't recommend that. But the th the thing's solid is it doesn't have anything spinning uh you can abuse the thing or more likely abuse it and uh not damage your your um data on it now let's take a look at price they're a little more expensive in fact they're a lot more expensive today you can get a terabyte for around a hundred dollars on a normal hard drive uh, if you get an ssd a decent one you're going to spend probably around two hundred dollars for an 80 gig or 120 gig. I would recommend uh, you getting an 80 gig or 120 gig hard drive for your media machine. Now you're gonna have to keep that clean which means that once you fill it up you dump it off on an external drive and it doesn't matter what drive you dump it off on because you're just wanting the stuff you use to be on the SSD. Uh, here's some prices and some things to look at. For a 120 gigabyte 2.5 drive you're gonna pay about 264 at Newegg now I'm at Newegg.com love that because you can read the reviews now as you look through these drives it might be tempted to go with the cheapest SSD you can get uh, this has amazing specs right here and this is something you want to look for 285 megabytes of read speed you want anything above 200 200 and above is good right now uh, anything above a um, hundred you want a hundred and up on the right speed. Now this has 275. Um, this one is a little deceiving. I looked at the reviews. If you look in here, you're going to start noticing. Uh, first of all, there's a high percentage of people that don't like this drive. If you scroll down, you're going to see uh, this one failed in less than three months. The drive fails to allow startup here. So we'll go back. The one I like. Let me recommend a brand here. Uh, OCZ. I've never used, but always gets good reviews. Um, and then your Intel stuff and I always use Intel just because I'm more familiar with their products so over on the left hand side I'm gonna bring up Intel and uh, notice that their 160's are considerably more expensive I would recommend the 80 that's what I have notice their write speeds are only 70 there's a few of them as you get newer for example uh, that one's of course a hundred uh, this one's an 80 gig. It still has 70 write. You're going to be okay with that because most of your stuff is going to be reading. But notice as the drives get bigger, they're getting up to the 100 megabytes there. Um, do not get, please do not get the 40 gig because look at this. It's 170 read. It's only 35 megabytes write. And that's getting really, really slow below 50 there. I'd prefer 100, but 35 is almost unacceptable. But amazingly, it's still faster than a lot of the SATA drives that you're probably using right now. All right. The last thing I have to say is if uh, you do replace the hard drive, you're going to have to either reinstall your operating system or clone your hard drive. 
Uh, neither one's really hard. Uh, if you're not familiar with cloning your hard drive, then uh, just ask around your church or ask one of your computer uh, techs whether you have one hired at your church or a guy in town that uh, you use to repair your computers. Just take it in. They can do it in a couple hours. They can clone your hard drive and you're off and running. Uh, the only problem is watch out for if your hard drive is larger, currently larger than the drive you buy, it is much, much harder to clone. So the guy you ask may or may not know how to do that. It is possible to clone a larger hard drive to a smaller hard drive, but it is harder. You have to get different software. Just note, keep that in mind. So if, if you go to a tech and he says, I can't clone that, then you just need to look for somebody else that can do it. Otherwise, you're going to need to reinstall your operating system, which isn't a bad idea anyways, and start off a fresh install. All right. Hey, speed up your computer. It's going to work. Trust me, it's the best investment you can make.